Today we are here in Harefield to follow Watford ladies on the build-up to their London Bees game this weekend. Tuesday is the first of three training sessions each week for Watford ladies. Each training session is extremely vital to get knowledge on the next opponent. Today we're going to be talking to Helen Ward, a striker for Watford ladies. She's going to talk us through what a generic training session would be like. Yeah, so we go through a bit of mobilisation and a warm up with Mickey. He's our sports scientist. Gets us going with um, some sort of activation work. Make sure we all, all our muscles are fired up, ready to go. Um, then we get into a bit of technical stuff. Uh, it's a bit cold tonight, so there's a lot of sort of small-sided games with a conditional focus um, just to keep us moving. And then yeah, we we tend to play either 11 v 11 at the end or or again small-sided or tactical stuff. So it's pretty pretty straightforward, but. You know, we'll work on whatever's happened at the previous game and then working towards the next game on the weekend. So with the game coming up this weekend, do you specifically train towards that team, for example? Do you look at videos, for example? Yeah, so we get sent videos of our own performances and also we get clips of, of the opposition so we know what sort of shape they're likely to set up in, what players they've got, danger men or women, I should say. Um, so we're sort of aware of, of what their strengths are. Uh, Tactically, we tend to focus on ourselves so that we're not worrying too much about the opposition. But again, we, we know where their danger people are, so we can work around that. Um, and then, yeah, it's just focusing on, on what we need to do for that specific game. With there only being around four hours each week for Watford ladies to train outside, they need to make sure they maximise that opportunity. Today they started with small-sided games and moved on to an 11v11 game at the end of the session. These training sessions are also a great opportunity for the players to prove themselves and try and get them in the starting 11 for the weekend's game. Day one of training here in Harefield is complete. With Watford ladies equal on points with London Bees, the game this weekend is going to be a close fought affair. Today we are back in Harefield for day two of training with Watford ladies. Today we'll be talking to some of the recently injured players and also the physiotherapists who have helped them along the way. Firstly, we're going to speak to Elle. Unfortunately, she's had a very big injury recently which has put her out for the rest of the season. So it was the first game of the season and I was going in for a tackle um, literally before the half time and I stretched in and my knee basically went in the opposite direction to the way my body was going and everything just buckled and ripped and I fell to the ground and yelped basically. So what was the process up to the operation? Was it like a painful experience, that gap? Uh, yeah, I was on crutches for two weeks and um, with the help of Rob, I basically went and paid for an MRI and paid for a specialist to speed along the process of having an operation. And about a week ago, I've just had the op, so it's eight weeks since, since the actual incident, so it's quite quick, basically. Has it given you any extra motivation to get back playing? At first, I was really like down about it, if I'm honest, but now I'm like really focused on coming back and being a lot stronger than I was before and being better than I was before so when I come back I don't have to focus on things that I struggle with this season I can just focus back focus back on playing football basically. So how long will it be do you think before you're actually back playing? So I say eight months Rob says nine but yeah probably nine nine months is a realistic look on it basically. Maybe a question if it's right to Rob um, how has the process been for you? From where we from where we were when it happened, it's it's it's, it's accelerated nice and smoothly, and we were fortunate um, with, to get Elle into a, a very very esteemed surgeon, <coughs> um, and uh, but she instigated that process by paying for certain things herself to start with, um, and I'm really pleased that it was done so quickly, because otherwise it would have been months uh, before she even had a scan. So. Yeah, so I'm really pleased so far. We also spoke to Eleanor Sargent about her recent injury. Uh, so what happened to uh, what happened to get the injury that you've got right now? Um, when we were playing Arsenal a couple of weeks ago, um, I kind of clashed like hips with the goalkeeper, our goalkeeper, and it's kind of just sort of gone on from there really. Do you think it's going to be a long injury process, or do you think it's hopefully relatively short? I hope it will be like short, but it just seems to be like one of those like niggly things. I can't seem to shake it off. So just see Rob, see if he can sort me out any quicker. With Wednesday mostly focused on strength and conditioning, it's a great time to use the gym before the weekend's game. The team will be heading to North London for the 2 p.m. kickoff against London Bees. With the team sitting next to each other in the standings, this weekend's game is incredibly important. Both teams will be pushing to the limit to try and secure the three points, which could see them going to the next round of this Continental Cup campaign.
On to Thursday and the last day of training for Watford ladies. We started the day by visiting the Butterfly House Hospice, which is located in High Wycombe. Helen was walked through the building by Ben, who's quickly going to talk to us now about what he does for the Butterfly House. So I'm Ben, I'm the community fundraiser for the South Bucks Community Hospice. Um, as a hospice, we really do rely on the local community to fundraise and, and support the majority of the costs of running the hospice. So we were delighted when we spoke to Watford Ladies FC and they invited us along to the Spurs game to do a bucket collection. We had our CEO Jo there, she was able to do a bit of awareness raising and it was just a really great day. Like I said, I love being involved in the community and I think community links like this are really important and the support from Watford Ladies FC has been amazing as well because they didn't have to do anything with local charities and, and they decided that for every home game that they'd love to work with a local charity so hopefully some of the other teams will take notice of what they're doing and realise the benefits of being able to support smaller local charities. Um, so this season uh, Watford Ladies has had a focus on having a charity partner for every game that we play, um, especially home games and the Butterfly House joined us for the Tottenham game back in October, was it? October. Um, came along with buckets, raising awareness, raising money, raising funds for, for the hospice here. And um, we're just here today to be introduced to some of the staff and, and what they do. And it's been really interesting to find out how it all works and, and who, who can come here and, and what services they provide. After seeing what Watford Ladies does for the community, today we're here for the last day of training before the big game this weekend. Each of the training sessions here with Watford Ladies is around two hours long, mixing it up with big games, small games, individual sessions, just making sure everyone is ready for the weekend's game. But today I wanted to speak to Helen about how she got in the sport herself. With 39 goals for her country rails, Helen's probably the perfect person to talk to about how to get into a career with football and the sacrifices she's had to make along the way. Uh, so I've got an older brother, he played a lot when I was younger and I used to have to follow him around, kicking a ball about at the side of the pitch. And then he went to secondary school and he found a, an advert for Watford Ladies. Uh, that was when I was about eight and I joined uh, and never looked back. Um, I've been to a couple of clubs in between and now I find myself back here at Watford again. So I assume growing up there must have been many sacrifices to, to get to this point, and especially as a Wales international as well. There must have been many things that you've had to sort of skip or you know maybe do what your friends didn't do to get to this moment. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's a big dropout amongst teenage girls once you get to secondary school and you know going out and drinking and things like that take over and you know luckily my friends were very understanding they understood that fo what football meant to me and there was no sort of peer pressure um, whereas some other girls I think find it hard to miss out on things that their friends are doing but as I said I had a, I had a good support around me and um, yeah you know I've, I've missed birthdays and I've, I've missed family weddings and things for football but you know football's a, a short career so I, I, I like to think it's worth the sacrifices and you know I've got a long time after I retire to go and enjoy those things again. So would you have any advice to any sort of young players out there that really want to get involved with the sport but maybe not 100% sure how to? Um, just have a look around your local area there's there's loads of clubs coming up now there's so much opportunity for young girls but you know you can also play with the boys if, if that's what you like you can go up to I think it's 16 or maybe even older now that girls can play with boys um, so that's always a good route and if you enjoy it keep doing it don't feel like as I said don't, don't su suffer with peer pressure and things like that but the most important thing is to enjoy it and, and see where it takes you. So that's it for training here in Harefield with only a couple of days until the big game I'm sure the ladies are very excited for what will hopefully be a great game. Watford ladies arrived at the Hive Stadium in North London around two hours before kickoff. The team had to run through any last preparation before the game started at 2pm. After a warm up on the pitch, the team head back to the change room for a last team talk before the game starts. The game kicked off at 2pm, with London Bees in the orange and Watford ladies in the red. Both teams were competitive from the outset, with early possession being shared. As the first half wore on, Watford ladies took a stronger grasp of the possession, which led to some chances. Helen Ward had two chances which nearly led to Watford being the lead before the break. With seconds of the half remaining, a corner was swung in from Annika Natel, which was met on the head by Rinsola Babajide, who scored her first goal for the team and it could have not come at a better time. <laughs> half time shortly after, the team went back into the changing room on a positive note, after a solid first half. The second half was a much closer affair than the first. Both teams had solid chances, but they were more evenly split between the two teams. With Watford ladies knowing there was a slim chance of qualifying out of their group, they kept the pressure on London Bees whilst remaining strong at the back. 
It was all looking to go to plan until a penalty was awarded to London Bees with about 10 minutes to go. The Bees captain, Emma Beckett, slotted away the penalty, putting the teams on level terms once again. With Watford ladies unable to find the net for the second time, the game had to go to penalties. In the Continental Cup, if the game is drawn after 90 minutes, both teams secure a point. The following penalty shootout is to decide who gets the extra point. Helen Ward stepped up for the ladies and Julie scored. It was back and forth in the shootout, but unfortunately for Watford ladies, London Bees managed to grab the win right at the end. Even though it was a loss after penalties, there were many positives to take from the game. As the sun sets on the Continental Cup campaign, we talked to Helen Ward about the game and how she thought it went. Um, tough game today. Uh, I think the quality from both sides was probably lacking a little bit. It was a bit, bit scrappy from start to finish. Um, I think first half we had some really good chances, myself included. I should have probably had two or three. Um, happy to come in, obviously, one nil up and thought we might push on in the second half, but didn't come. They stepped on a little bit and put us under a bit of pressure and then obviously equalised with a penalty with, with not long to go. And then, of course, it went down to a penalty shootout, and, which is a bit of a lottery. Fran did really well with the first one, but you know they took the rest of their penalties really well. And unfortunately for our two, we, uh, we just missed out. Yeah, I think um, a bit of game management and a bit of bit more quality on the ball and in possession. We didn't keep it well enough today, and that cost us a little bit. We invited them onto us by giving the ball back to them too easily. Um, and then, of course, like I said, game management. When we're winding up with, with 15, 10, 15 minutes to go, we need to we need to make sure we keep players out of our box and, and deal with things better. And I think a few times we could have cleared our lines quicker than we did, and we put ourselves under too much pressure at, at, at a key stage in the game. So that's it for our week behind the scenes with Watford Ladies. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments down below and we'll see you all soon. Goodbye.